All right, so I've been getting questions about this online. Surprisingly, some people think that attending Sunday is a pagan Catholic holiday. So I've been getting comments on that. So the question now is, is attending church Sunday a pagan Catholic day? The answer is a simple no, it's not. Is it true that the Catholics were the ones who created Sunday? Yes. Okay, so here's the thing is that some people look only at certain parts of, and pieces of history, but they don't look at the overall picture of history. So you got to realize this. If you're a person who's a critical mindset and a person who's very open-minded and also skeptical and critical, you got to realize this. You can't just believe information so easily yeah, just man, because yeah. it's just one or two or pieces of information that are true. You got to look at the overall picture. So it's true that the Catholics, they were the ones who created Sunday after the name of the, some pagan god of the sun. Constantine, he was mostly involved in that. And Constantine was practically the last Roman emperor and probably the first Roman pope, so to speak. So he's the one that combined this together. And that's why we're all worshiping on Sunday. So we're all pagans now following a pagan thing and we're worshiping the sun, you know. Okay, so here's the idea is that you got to realize Sunday is obviously the first day of the week, right? Amen. So you got to realize this just because pagans do their religious ceremonies on the first day of the week, that should not scare us from worshiping God on the first day of the week, as long as we don't have those pagan observances with us. You got to realize this, pagans will even use the Bible too. Did you know that? Will that scare you from having the Bible? Didn't you know pagans worship Jesus too? Pagan Catholics worship Jesus. Should that scare us from worshiping Jesus too? So you got to realize this, just because pagans and wrong religions are doing something that uh, the Bible shows, the Bible shows that it's okay to do and it's right, that shouldn't scare you from doing it, okay? Sometimes Satan will do something to copycat God so that he can scare saved believers from serving God the right way. That should be thought-provoking. Okay, let's start off with Colossians chapter 2. First of all, you understand this. It does not matter what day you worship God. There's a crazy saying that the mark of the beast is actually the Sabbath. That's what they're going to be saying. And that everyone is going to be taking the mark of the beast when they worship on Sunday. That is so not true. Look at Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting, the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So notice right here that God blotted out the law. Okay, he blotted out the Old Testament law. But look at this, when he blotted out this Old Testament law, thus look at verse 16. Let no man therefore what? Judge you. So people uh, online, people online and religions and some cult member drop by at you and judge you for worshiping God on Sunday. The Bible says, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon, or of the what? Sabbath day. So notice right here that the Word of God says that in this passage, no judgment. Don't judge on specific days, observing specific days. They, get, they make a big deal when observing specific days. But the Bible says don't make a big deal out of it. Don't judge it. Don't judge it. Now, here's another thing is like, what's wrong? Go to Matthew 28. Go to Matthew 28. What's wrong with observing a day when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ resurrected and he completed his mission of salvation and that we were saved in the Lord Jesus Christ and we celebrate a day when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ resurrected. What's wrong with that? Isn't that something to amen about? Yeah, look at Matthew chapter 28, verse 1. So what's wrong with that? In the end of the what? Ooh, that's a big, uh, it's like God wanted to show you right here. It's not the Sabbath God thought was important. Sabbath end, sorry, there. Instead, what is instead? In the end of the Sabbath, which is Saturday, as it began to dawn toward the what? 
first day of the week. Notice right here came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. So notice right here that the angel of the Lord he came down and rolled away the stone. So there was the resurrection. Now I, re I talked to this guy, I think Robert was with me that time, some weird guy, a visitation, and he mentioned what was the real name of Jesus. And then I was like, uh, yeah, it's Jesus. And he's like, no. And then I was like, okay. And I knew some of the stuff online. I was like, okay, Yeshua? He's like, no, no, that's pagan. I was like, okay. And then I went by the black Hebrew Israel. Okay, Yahshua or, you know, stuff like that. No. And I was like, Yahweh? He's like, no. And then he mentioned Yah something. I was like, where did that come from? I was like, I never heard that before. And then my members were even looking it up online and we're like, where did that come from? So this man claimed that, you know, Jesus Christ did not resurrect on Sunday. But the thing is this, is that if you look at verse 1, you'll notice it's dawning. It started the first day, right? What happened after that, after it says that? Verse 2, that's the resurrecting resurrection occurring. The angel rolled the stone away. See that? So Jesus resurrected at that time, at the first day. So this is proof right here. What's wrong with Observing a day when our Lord resurrected. Amen. I don't want to worship a day when our Lord is dead. Mm, yeah, that's good. I mean, at the Sabbath, he was down there. At the Sabbath, he was dead at the heart of the earth. Wouldn't it be better that we observe a day when our Lord resurrected? Yeah, but you know what? Let's do this as well. Let's also look at Scripture. Go to Acts chapter 20. Acts mm. chapter 20. Yeah, huh? In the Bible, Christians worship God on Sunday. Yes. Yep. Yes, okay, it's not the Catholic Church. Long before the Catholic Church ever did it, Christians were doing it. See, Satan was copycatting the Christians, that's it. Satan knew there would be people who would get fooled by some teaching that the Catholic Church created Sunday, and he knew that that thing would scare people from worshiping God on Sunday. Maybe that's why he copycatted it. Look at Acts chapter 20, verse 7. And upon the first day of the week, see that? When the disciples came together to break bread, see that? The people gathering together, eating a meal together as a church. Paul preached unto them. See, they sat under a preaching, ready to depart on the morrow and continued his speech until midnight. Look at that. That's similar with our church setting. We meet together so that we can hear the pastor preach and we even eat meals together. We fellowship. So notice right here that church attendance was on Sunday. I know you don't like that. So before you accuse Christians for having the mark of the beast or whatnot, you got to realize this. You got to call Paul an antichrist worshiper, I guess. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense. Another thing is 1 Corinthians 16. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Notice when they gather together again for offering. That's why in church we do offerings, tithes and offerings at that day. We have 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Notice that Christians gathered together and they were doing offering in the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1. Now concerning the, look at this, collection for the saints. See that? We're going to take up a collection. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia. See that? It's done in the church. Even so do ye when upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. So look at right here, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 1 through 2. Notice that the church collected offering. There was a collection in the church. Collection in church when? On the Sabbath. No, on Sunday. Notice right here again on Sunday. I guess they were all gathering together to worship the sun and took up a collection to, hey, we're going to buy a more fancy idol for the sun, God. So that doesn't make sense, obviously. That doesn't make sense. Not only that, there are many people throughout church history, okay, early Christians. There is too much historical evidence that there were early Christians who gathered together in churches on Sunday, long before the Catholic Church made up this thing. Let me give you some documented sources here. The Epistle of Barnabas at 100 AD, quote, Wherefore we Christians keep the eighth day, see, after 
the seventh day, Saturday. Keep the eighth day for joy, on which also Jesus arose from the dead, and when he appeared, ascended into heaven. That's found at 15.8, uh, 15.8F, the Epistle of Barnabas 100 AD. Uh, this can be found with Anti-Nicene Fathers, Volume 1, page 147. Another one is quoted by Bardassanes at 200 AD. This is found in his uh, book, On Fate, On Fate. Quote, wherever we are, we are all called after the one name of Christ, Christians. On one day, the first day of the week, we assemble ourselves together. Here's another one from the Did Didascalia at 225 AD. This is found at Didasci... Didascalia 2, quote, the apostles further appointed on the first day of the week, let there be service and the reading of the Holy Scriptures and the oblation because on the first day of the week, our Lord rose from the place of the dead. Another one is Ignatius at 250 AD. This is found at his work Fragments by Ignatius. Quote, this, the custom of not bending the knee upon Sunday is a symbol of the resurrection through which we have been set free by the grace of Christ from sins and from death, which has been put to death under him. Now this custom took its rise from apostolic times as the blessed Irenaeus, the martyr and Bishop of Lyons declares in his treatise on Easter in which he makes mention of Pentecost also upon which we do not bend the knee because it is of equal significance with the Lord's day for the reason already alleged concerning it. Here's another one from Justin Martyr, from 150 AD, from Justin Martyr. It's found at the first Apology of Justin at the weekly worship of the Christians, chapter 68. Quote, and on the day called Sunday, all who live in cities or in the country gather together to one place, and the memoirs of the apostles or the writings of the prophets are read as long as time permits. Then when the reader has ceased, the president verbally instructs and exhorts to the imitation of these good things. Then we all rise together and pray, and as we before said, when our prayer is ended, bread and wine and water are brought. And the president in like manner offers prayers and thanksgivings according to his ability, and the people assent saying, Amen. Now, does this, doesn't this sound like your typical Sunday services so far? Mm -hmm. So did, uh, this isn't something made up, see? This is lo uh, long before the Catholic Church, you got to understand. Let's keep reading right here. Uh, and there is a distribution to each and a participation of that over which thanks have been given. And to those who are absent, a portion is sent by the deacons. And they who are well-to-do and willing give what each thinks fit and what is collected is deposited with the president who succors the orphans and widows and those who through sickness or any other cause are in want and those who are in bonds and the strangers sojourning among us and in a word takes care of all who are in need. It sounds like your typical collection on Sunday, right? Let's keep reading. But Sunday is the day on which we all hold our common assembly because it is the first day on which God, having wrought a change in the darkness and matter, made the world and Jesus Christ, our Savior, on the same day rose from the dead. Amen. Now, there's no doubt. So this is not something we just made up right here. There's no doubt that Christians, they've realized, early Christians realized the significance of this, which is why they gathered together to worship and read the scriptures. That makes a lot of sense. So we see right here, Sunday is not something of a pa pagan Catholic holiday. Because why? Because there is evidence, so many evidences. I only gave you a portion till it made you sick and sleepy and bored, okay? So I can give you more if you like. But there should be sufficient, satisfactory evidences that early Christians did it long before the Catholic Church. Long before. They were long before Catholicism. Not only that, the Apostle Paul and the early churches in the Bible did it. Not only that, the Bible says don't judge on a specific day to observe. We don't judge on that one. We don't judge on that one. There are some people who can't worship on Sunday if they're in communist countries. Maybe the communist government can trace them easier that way. So the Lord doesn't judge that. But we believe in doing as many of the early Christians did and the Apostle Paul did. So as, if you want to be as scriptural as possible, scriptural as possible, not only that, historical as much as possible, 
to the early Christians, you know what you should be doing? You should be worshiping God on Sunday then. That should be something. If you want to be close scripturally and historically.